way of Will John. How can how can we get rid of fear? How do I get rid of anxiety? I think that's a massive thing that's going on, especially in today's society, and it seems to be, especially for young young people, is dealing with anxiety, dealing with the social pressures, dealing with the whatever. Mm-hmm. How do you deal with that, or have you found some way for people to tackle uh, all of the the things that they fear in their lives uh, through? you know, your experiences in that sense. Sure. Okay. The fears will actually boil down to, to just a few, um, even though they, you know, fear creates more fear. The more fear you have, the easier it is to create more fear. It just builds on itself. So you start with a little tiny fear and pretty soon you can blow that up into something that is a, is a problem for you. And yes, athletes have blocks. Writers have blocks. All sorts of people have blocks and the blocks are all the same thing. They're blocks of fear, of course. And that fear usually starts with just some small little thing about, well, what if I screw up or what if I don't do this right? Or, you know, what if I get it wrong? And that's a feeling of inadequacy. It's a feeling of not being good enough. It's a feeling of not measuring up. And our culture just produces people with that fear, period. Our culture is always... You know, it's always very competitive. I mean, even when you're in preschool, you know, even when you're you're in elementary school, there's the kids that get it right and there's the kids that don't. You know, (laughs) there's everybody sees themselves in this light of of measuring themselves against others. And, you know, there's always going to be somebody that maybe does things better than you do at some things. And you learn to doubt yourself. And when you doubt yourself, that lets that fear come in. And what makes a really good player a good player for a long time and not just a, a, you know, a shot, you know, not just a star that goes up and then comes down is confidence. When they have that confidence that they know that that if they just let themselves do what they do, it'll be all right. Whatever it is, however it comes out, not that that they'll never make a mistake. Of course, they're going to make mistakes. That's not the point. If you're afraid of making mistakes, that will make you make a mistake. (laughs) If you're not afraid of making mistakes, then you don't have that pressure to make the mistake. So it's a matter of dealing with these things of not being good enough. And we learn them early on. We learn them from our parents. You know, our parents often, you know, we we treat our children sometimes very dismissively. We don't treat them as little individual beings who, you know, need you to come and talk to them at their level, need you to give them encouragement at their level. We're always dismissing them because they don't know much yet and they don't understand much. Just do what I tell you, you know, that kind of a thing. Uh, Not now, we're busy, you know, and well, when you keep telling kids, not now, we're busy and do what we tell you and, and, uh, you know, you're always messing up. You only, you only really interface with them when they've done something wrong. As long as they're being, good and they're playing and everybody's happy, you got nothing to say to them. And then as soon as it gets negative, oh, well, now you're there telling them what they're doing wrong, you see. But from the child's viewpoint, the child just, you know, it's invisible when they're doing things right. But when they're doing wrong, suddenly they get nailed for it. So people grow up feeling like they have inadequacies, that they're not good enough, that they aren't going to always succeed. And if they get really good at something, that the fact that, well, I'm good at this, I'm a star, just that thought, that's ego, makes them feel like, oh, yeah, but how am I going to keep that star? Can I keep that star forever or am I going to screw up? Well, just the fact that they became a star produces the insecurity that takes them away, takes that star away from them, you see? Yeah. So it's just like the people that are doing uh, remote viewing. Oh, they're just doing it. They're being themselves. They're relaxed. Oh, they're great. And as soon as they realize, oh, I can do this, I'm good at it. They can't do anything anymore. You know? Could you maybe and uh, just explain quickly for people who don't know what remote viewing even is? Uh, uh, yes, remote vi- what remote is. viewing is that you can see in your mind things that are going on someplace else. So like right now, if I wanted to know what was going on in some other part of the world, I could go to that part of the world in my mind and view it and interact with it. And I could come back and say, well, here's what I saw in this room at this time. And then you could go call somebody up and say, go check and see if that's it. Remote viewing is being able to get information about someplace that you're not, or that you don't know about, that you don't, 
have any normal ways of getting information. So that's why I call it paranormal. Again, paranormal just means it's it's something that people don't understand yet. Once you understand consciousness, then it's not paranormal. It's just normal. It's just the way we are. It's part of being human, you know, that you can do these things. But you don't do them very well if you don't train for it. 